The ThinkPad T450s is a very popular laptop. Known for having the best features of the ThinkPad T-Series product line, such as the build quality, keyboard, and track point with physical buttons, as well as being a competent Ultrabook, the T450s is one of the best used laptops out there for those on a budget. But things don't stop there. One of the reasons why the T450s is so popular is its upgradability, with storage, memory, and an external battery being among the parts that can be easily replaced in this laptop. So today, I'll show the upgrade process for the keyboard, storage, memory, thermal paste, and internal battery, giving step-by-step -step instructions along the way. You'll need a Phillips head screwdriver, a smaller screwdriver for the keyboard, a flat tool for prying the chassis open like an old gift card, and preferably a tray to hold your screws. For this purpose, I'm using the lid of an old T-tin. Before you do anything, make sure to disable the internal battery in the BIOS. This makes sure that your computer is not powered, and it will not turn on until you plug it in again. It's also a good idea to consult the hardware maintenance manual. I'll leave a link to that in the video description. I'll start out with the keyboard. There are different models of keyboard for this machine produced by different manufacturers. Generally, the light on is the better one because it isn't as much of a fingerprint magnet and it doesn't leave marks on the screen. My model came with a worse one, so I ordered a new keyboard from AliExpress. Unfortunately, I got sent a fake keyboard of the wrong model, but the upgrade process is the same, so I'll be showing that anyway. First, you have to remove the battery. This exposes two rubber stoppers which keep the keyboard in place. To remove them, use something flat to pry them out. I use my smaller flathead screwdriver to do this. After this, flip the laptop over and open the lid so that you can see the keyboard. You should see two small indentations on the bottom of the keyboard. Use these to push the keyboard's top frame up towards the screen. This should reveal six screws. Use a smaller screwdriver to unscrew all of these screws. Then, slide the keyboard away from the screen and gently lift it up. This should reveal the ribbon cables that connect the keyboard to the laptop. To remove those cables, first remove the rubber cover over the top of the laptop chassis. Then, remove the ribbon cables by flipping the latch mechanisms up and gently pulling the cables out. Take the rubber cover off of the ribbon cables. At this point, I tried to install the new keyboard, but the cables didn't fit. So I reinstalled the old keyboard by reversing the process of removing it. First, slide the rubber cover back over the two keyboard ribbon cables. Then, plug them in by sliding them into the connectors and flipping the latch mechanism back down. Slide the rubber cover down the cables and reattach it to the laptop chassis. Then, slide the top of the keyboard under the top of the laptop's palm rest and tighten the screws on the keyboard. Finally, slide the keyboard frame back into place. To test your keyboard, plug the laptop in and turn it on. If the keyboard works, replace the rubber stoppers and you'll be done. To upgrade the other components, you'll have to remove the bottom cover. Start out by removing the external battery and disabling the internal battery if you have not already. Then, loosen the 8 screws holding the bottom cover in place. Some of these screws are captive, so they will not come out even if you turn the laptop over. However, the other screws are not. After loosening the screws, use a flat edge like an old gift card to pry the clips up in this order. If you try to pry up the wrong ones first, you might break the bottom cover. This will take a while, and it will be frustrating. Try to slide the card under the cover and then move the card towards the clips to unclip them. Lift the bottom panel off of the laptop and place it to the side. First, I'm going to show you how to upgrade the hard drive or SSD. First, remove the single screw holding the plastic drive caddy in place. Then, slide the drive out. Pull the nubs on the caddy off of the drive one by one. To install a new drive, push the nubs on the caddy into the screw holes of the drive. Make sure that your SATA connector pins are facing upward. If you put the caddy on the wrong way, it's really easy to reinstall it though. Afterwards, slide the drive back in and replace a screw holding the caddy to the laptop. Next, I'm going to upgrade the memory. The upgradable memory DIMM slot is located under a black plastic flap, so lift it up to reveal the slot. If there is already a model in the slot, remove it by pulling the two metal tabs outward. The old module should pop upwards. Then, pull it out. To install the new memory module, slide it into the slot and push it down so that it locks into place under the metal tabs. 
To remove the heatsink and replace the thermal paste, first unplug the fan connector by carefully pushing it out of the connector. Then unscrew the four screws holding the heatsink in place. Carefully lift the heatsink and fan assembly up and place it to the side. To replace the thermal paste, first remove the old paste from the heatsink and CPU using rubbing alcohol. Then apply a small amount of paste to the CPU die. If you want, you can apply paste to the smaller PCH die next to the CPU die, but I'm not even sure if it actually contacts the heatsink. As you can see in the video, I accidentally overdid my thermal paste job. However, if you're using a non-conductive thermal paste, like the Arctic MX2 that I used, this shouldn't be a problem. Replace the heatsink and fan assembly on the CPU and screw in the heatsink. Be sure to use a cross pattern when screwing in the heatsink so that the thermal paste will be more evenly spread. Also, try to screw in the heatsink tightly to get good contact between the CPU and the heatsink. Finally, reinsert the CPU fan connector. To remove the internal battery, first unscrew the three screws holding it into place. Then unplug the battery connector just like the fan connector. Lift the battery out. To replace the battery, route the cable through the channel in the chassis. Place the battery into the compartment and replace the three screws holding the battery into place. Finally, plug in the battery connector. You can also upgrade the Wi-Fi card and you can add a wireless WAN card or a SATA M.2 2242 SSD into the larger card slot. You can upgrade and replace the screen, but that process is more complicated. To replace the bottom cover, push it back onto the chassis to clip it in. Try to apply even pressure when doing this. Then, replace and retighten the screws holding the cover in place. Plug in a charger and turn on the laptop. If it posts and successfully enters the BIOS, congratulations, you are done. I decided that I would measure before and after performance and temperature numbers on this laptop to see what difference my upgrades made. And I can tell you that the new thermal paste did wonders to thermals on this machine. Before the upgrade, the CPU intermittently throttled when running a 10 minute ID64 stress test with temperatures hovering in the 80s and sometimes reaching 90. After the repaste, the CPU stayed in the 70s during a 10 minute stress test and it didn't throttle. Cinebench R20 also benefited from not throttling, scoring 639 after the repaste versus a thermally limited 386 before. I thought adding the memory and taking away dual channel might negatively impact graphics performance, so I tested Minecraft before and after the upgrade. This was a mixed bag with no noticeable difference in performance. In conclusion, I'd say that the thermal paste replacement was definitely worth it, as is the upgrade from a spinning hard drive to an SSD. The memory upgrade really depends on what you're doing on your computer, and the keyboard is really just a nice to have. That's going to be it for this video. If you want to see more about the ThinkPad T450S, be sure to check out my previous video on it. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next episode of Tiger Steve Tech.